Greetings to all Magic fans on the channel. Today, we will dive into the world of Hogwarts to recall and discuss the 10 most memorable and significant moments featuring Severus Snape. Are you ready to find out which scenes we have chosen? Then stay with us, because there's a lot of interesting content ahead. Scene number one. Saving Harry from Quirrell's actions. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Once Harry arrived at Hogwarts, he didn't think of anything better than to make a couple of enemies right from the start. First, he antagonized Draco Malfoy, and then he boldly responded to Severus Snape, who saw James Potter in Harry. The dislike was mutual, so much so that Harry even thought Snape was behind all the crimes related to the Sorcerer's Stone. Another proof of this was when Snape cursed Harry's broom during a Quidditch match, trying to make him fall to the ground. Only at the end of the film did the characters learn that Severus Snape was actually trying to help Harry and counteract Professor Quirrell's spell. This was the first key moment in Harry and Severus's relationship, but it took Potter a while to understand that Snape never wished him harm. Scene number two. Snape becomes suspicious. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. At the beginning of the film, when Harry arrived at Hogwarts and first saw Severus Snape, his scar hurt for the first time. Initially, many viewers thought the scar was somehow connected to Snape, but by the end of the movie, this moment was almost forgotten. However, on a rewatch, it's noticeable that Severa sees Harry clutching his scar and then starts looking in the direction where Quirrell is sitting. Since Quirrell was off-camera, many viewers didn't pay much attention to this the first time, and not everyone noticed it on subsequent viewings. Scene number three, Severus shields the trio from Werewolf Lupin, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This scene is partly surprising because it's not in the book, but Alfonso Cuaron still added it, although only Alan Rickman and J.K. Rowling knew how truly good a person Severus was. Having emerged from the Shrieking Shack, Severus certainly didn't expect to see Remus Lupin transformed into a werewolf but he quickly and decisively stood in front of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, gathering them together and shielding them with his body. In the book, Severus was lying in the shack all this time. Scene number four. Boggart takes the form of Severus, Harry Potter, and the prisoner of Azkaban. Severus Snape particularly detested Neville Longbottom, and Neville developed such a great fear that even his boggart took the form of the professor. But Neville quickly dressed Severus in his grandmother's clothes. Although it was not the real Snape, seeing him this way was particularly amusing. Scene number five. Severus tries to instill a love of learning in Harry and Ron, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry and Ron needed to solve their lessons, but it was impossible as all their thoughts were occupied by the Yule Ball. Because of their chatter, Severus once hit them with a textbook, but it looked more friendly because the hit was so soft that Daniel Radcliffe's Harry even laughed. Later, Severus rolled up his sleeves and showed Harry and Ron where to look. This brief minute-long scene is particularly memorable and iconic because of the famous behind-the-scenes photo where Alan Rickman, Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grint are laughing during a break between takes. Snape deals with Dumbledore, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Sometime after returning from the cave, Dumbledore encountered Draco Malfoy and the Death Eaters, while Harry watched from a safe distance. To his fleeting relief, Severus Snape soon appeared, but not to save Albus, but to end him. Please, Severus. These words, remembered by every Potterhead, became a subject of debate after the book's release. Not everyone believed that Dumbledore was asking for mercy, and they were right, as he was actually asking Severus to do something he did not want to do. Since then, Harry had a long and hard journey before he learned that the real victim at that moment was not Dumbledore or himself, but Severus. Severus admits he is the Half-Blood Prince, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Right after Dumbledore's death, the spells he had placed on Harry lifted and he ran after the Death Eaters. Feeling strong anger,
Potter attacked Severus twice and failed both times. The second time he used the Sectum Sempra spell, which surprised Snape, and even made him approach the lying student to say that he was the half-blood prince. Scene number eight, Severus neutralizes Caro. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. None of the students or teachers even considered that Severus might be a double agent acting against Voldemort, although it was thanks to his work as headmaster that the students suffered less than they could have. In his last appearance at Hogwarts, Snape redirected Professor McGonagall's spells towards the Caro siblings, causing the Death Eaters to lose two fighters even before the battle for Hogwarts began. Scene number nine. Harry and Severus's last meeting. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. Although the viewers were not entirely sure that Severus Snape was working for Dumbledore against Voldemort, his last living scene was heart-wrenching. Yes, he dealt with Dumbledore. Yes, he tormented the students. But Alan Rickman's natural charm did its job, and Severus's departure would have been painful for fans, even if it weren't for the scene with his memories in the pensive. However, everything became clear at the moment of his contact with Harry Potter. Then they did not hate each other, but rather regretted what had happened and how they had treated each other. But even in such a scene, there was relief when Severus said, You have your mother's eyes. Scene number 10, Severus's Memories, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 2. Perhaps the best scene with Severus Snape is the revelation of his secret, which he had kept deep within his memory for many years. When Harry saw Severus spending his last seconds on Earth, he did not gloat and it was the only right decision, otherwise he would never have forgiven himself. Taking Snape's memories, Potter went to the pensive and saw something that completely overturned all his notions about the man who seemed to him exclusively evil and unjust. Severus had known Lily Evans, Harry Potter's mother, since childhood and always loved her, but due to James Potter's actions and his own insecurity, he lost her. When Severus realised that Lily was in danger, he sided with Dumbledore and stayed on it, even after Albus could not protect them. The purpose of Severus's life became avenging Voldemort and preserving the life of her son, who, although he was a copy of his father, still resembled Lily and reminded Severus of her with just his eyes.